Hi everyone! Today we are going to take a look at ribosome and see how we can add its function to our DNA toolkit. So Wikipedia article on ribosome is great to refresh your knowledge on how ribosome works. So it's number three in this image. We are going to replicate its function in our code. What ribosome basically does, it is a part of every cell, right? So it takes a look at mRNA string, or we can pass a DNA string in our case too. It is going to scan a reading frame we provide to it, and is going to generate a sequence of amino acids that can be used to produce proteins. All right. Again, that's the ribosome. We are providing our mRNA or DNA string, and it will return an amino acid chain, which can be, again, used to build a protein. And we will see that when we're going to pass a real biological sequences, it will return a real proteins that we can look up on a database and see that they do exist. That's a very good test of our code as well. So this is a very good image that shows open reading frame. And we are scanning triplets, codons here to generate amino acids. We're going to have to generate six reading frames. To refresh your knowledge on open reading frames and why we need to generate six of them, I will link to this article and there is a very nice recording down here. It's only two minutes, 47 seconds, but the information provided in it is very nice and clear. Okay, so let's get to it. So let's now run the last code that we wrote, which was amino acid sequence and codon frequency. We are going to be reusing DNA codon structure that we've added in our last video. Instead of me copying and pasting a snippet, let's try writing this function line by line together. I'm just going to copy and paste the name of the function and the comment. So it is called gen reading frames, generate reading frames provided a sequence, DNA or RNA sequence. So the first thing we need to do, we need a list where we're going to store reading frames, six of them. So let's create a list called frames. It's an empty list. And let's try appending a first reading frame to it. So as we know, we need to append a list of amino acids, but we are given a DNA or RNA string. So we need to translate it first and then add it to our frames. So we're going to call our translate function and we're going to give it seek. Okay. But as we remember, we have this parameter here that allows us to start reading from any particular position. So in this case, we're going to use this parameter for the first time and we're going to specify zeroth position, meaning start reading from the beginning of this reading frame. So let's copy this line two more times. If you are using Visual Studio Code, it's control alt down one, two. So we have copied this twice and we are going to shift from zero to one to two. So now we have three reading frames. Now that we have these reading frames, we have to return the frames that we generated. So we're going to just return our frames. And of course, that is going to return a list that contains all of these lists we appended to it. Before we go ahead and add three more reading frames with a reverse complement, let's try actually printing this out and looking at our first three reading frames. Let's go back to our main file. So here in our main pi file, let's add output number nine. And let's use a for loop to go through a list entries. So our function will create a list of lists. So one list will contain these three lists. Let's print it out so we can see what it is. For frame in, and we're gonna call this function, generate reading frames, and let's pass our DNA string to it. Okay. And let's print out the frame. And let's see what we have. Now that we have our first three reading frames, working, we have to make sure that's the correct reading frame. So the best way is to look at the third position here. So this is starting from zero, one, and two. So we have this amino acid. Let's go back to our DNA string. So one, two, three. So this should be that amino acid. Let's go back to our trusty 
data structure and search for it. And of course it returns V. So now we have our first three reading frames working. Let's add three more reading frames, reverse complement based reading frames. So we're going to copy this one line here again, control alt down, and we're going to set it to zero, start reading from zero again, but instead of a sequence, we need a reverse complement of that sequence. Okay, and we are going to copy this line two more times, control alt down, down, and we are going to shift the reads again, zero to two. Let's go back to our main.py file and let's run it. So now we have these six reading frames. This replicates ribosome functionality. Now we are ready to write another function that goes through all of these six reading frames and accumulates all of the amino acids between start and stop codon. That is a potential protein. We are going to apply a real biological sequence. It is going to find proteins. We're going to go to online database to see if this is a real protein. And it is a very good test of our code. And we will see that it gives us correct results. Okay. So just to recap, we just added one small, but very important function generating reading frames. And then we added ninth output here to see the result of reading frames. So this is it for this video. I hope it was interesting. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below or just join our chat on Telegram or Matrix. Until next time, Rebel Coder, signing out.